Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. And what a week it has been. 100 degrees, crime, homicide, dog aside, we've had it all. Joining us this week, Sarah Finsky from St. Louis Public Radio. My man, Joe Holloman from St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Next to him, <laughs> one of our founders, Bill McClellan from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. And another of our founders, Ray Hartman from Riverfront Times. Well, we're going to start with you, Bill. We had a crime summit in the city. Uh, we had the mayor and the county executive and the police chiefs and none of the prosecutors. Plus, we're going to wait 10 days to find out what they talked about because it was all done in private. Uh, your thoughts kind of to get us started off. Where is this going to go and do you think it'll do some good? Uh, I don't think it'll go anywhere. I don't think it'll do any good. I think that this is just an opportunity to express concern. I think it was... Uh, Ridiculous not to have the two prosecutors there, although Kim Gardner has not been much of a prosecutor. Yeah, I mean, so I don't think her absence helps or hurts, but I, I think this is just a photo op and the governor got to be in on it. I, I don't think it'll do any good. But if you're talking about a photo op, I mean, the optics of this are terrible. We finally have a black elected prosecutor in St. Louis County and one in St. Louis City, and they're not given a seat at the table. If the whole point of summits like this is to try to make it look like we're doing something good, why would you want to exclude two of these people who represent a big part of the community that is having to deal with the crime problem we well, have? Well, I think that speaks to the dysfunction that's occurring. I don't think it's when you, uh, when, when you talk about leaving people out, uh, it seems to me that some political leaders believe that Wesley Bell and especially Kim Gardner don't want to work with police and Chief Hayden was at this as well so was Jimmy Edwards the head of the Department of Public Safety uh, were at this meeting so yeah I think it was bad farm to not invite them I wasn't surprised when I heard they weren't but bottom line I agree with Bill anytime I hear about politicians having a summit I will almost bet money that nothing concrete will come out of it. Well, the, I, go ahead, Ray. I'm, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I agree with the last statement. Um, I think it was outrageous that that, that, that that she is the circuit attorney elected serving in office. And it was outrageous that the city uh, circuit attorney and the county uh, prosecutor were, were excluded. And, and keep in mind, the U.S. attorney, who happens to be Caucasian, was invited. And so it was a very noticeable absence. I think the interesting thing no one's talking about is if I'm, first of all, I'm not sure I'm giving a form to Mike Parson in as much as, and if, if they did talk about whatever, they, behind closed doors, I'd like to know what they, if they asked him about having the city and county be free to have gun restrictions and gun controls and, and stop having Jefferson City, which claims to be about less government, dictating to communities like city and county what what their gun control because our needs are different than Bolivar and and Cape and Moberly and and that should be to me item number one well for the he, he came into the summit saying that that was off of the table well then and then right. it shouldn't have been a table right. they should have right. said right. don't come in right so the, the, the only uh, possible justification for not having Wesley Bell or Kim Gardner is it, it was nothing anyway but I mean <laughs> well all right, let me be devil's advocate, because I kind of agree with you all, but I will say this. All right, is it the prosecutor, no matter where you're at, it's not your job to stop crime or really slow down crime. Your job is to prosecute alleged criminals. So you're kind of like on the on the back end of the process, right? Now, so could that be the reasoning? No, I, because they he, had the U.S. attorney there. He's the head of the federal prosecutors. And so by inviting him, they took that excuse they off, took the that off the table. What it is is the mayor and some of the people involved in this, they did not want to upset the police. And the police hate Kim Gardner so much right now that this was just a feint to their political base. That's at least it's some people's theory. Well, we can, uh, that's a good segue. Oh, God forbid. A oh there we go. Basis. Perfect oh, no. segue there, Sarah. <laughs> Kim Gardner. Okay. Well, she sent a one word tweet called Excellent in response to a tweet that Megan Green had put out that was not complimentary of police. It really didn't say they were 
you know, murderers or anything like that. And, and her tweet was exactly. And her tweet, Kim Garner's tweet was exactly. Uh, local police, some police throughout the nation are saying that she should resign. Uh, I guess she found out maybe yesterday that she's going to have an opponent, believe it or not, in what, 2021? In, uh, 2020. Uh, 2020. In uh, Mary Pat Carl, who wrote a commentary in the Post-Dispatch, which I said sounded like it was written by a political op and that she was beginning her campaign. So I guess I was right about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? But is she in trouble or is it piling no, first, on? First or? of all, this is a rematch. They ran mm -hmm. yes, the last that's time. True. That's Kim true. Gardner got 47% of the vote. I think she got 23. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be, it's a rematch. I think, first of all, I know it's very unfashionable to do this. I did contact Kim Gardner's office and they would point out that they prosecute three, more than 3,000 people a year in the city. Prosecute, charge, and get, and according to them, they, they have a 90% conviction rate. I've heard other people saying it's 20%. You know, there's just so much non, you know, so much of a disinformation, and yes, the police hate her, and at least to listen to her, she doesn't hate them back, but she does have views. That's her. her well, 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 so, let me say one she thing. She doesn't hate the police back. Right. She sure lets on like she does. I, I think and, and the no turmoil question, in, in her office is, is awful as well. But to your point the on the election, coming and going. keep in mind the election. In 2020, which is a state election, not a city election. People get the, the state candidates that are up in the city include Tashara Jones, the treasurer, um, who is African American, uh, the sheriff, who um, his name uh, Vernon Betts, Vernon yeah. Betts, who's African American, and uh, Kim Gardner, who's African American, and Lacey Clay is up, of course, in the city. And so it's it, there's no mayor or election then, and. Right now, a lot of people tell it, I understand, the African-American community is very resentful uh, and galvanizing behind Kim Gardner. Sure. And so I think she's in a much stronger position electorally than she was or would have been had she not been attacked so much by the police. Well, does she deserve that support? I, I think that, that there's a lot of misinformation um, all over the place about her, and, and I don't think it's fair to, to not... To, to suggest, as some people have, that she's just not doing anything. She's prosecuting over 3,000 people. What I started to say is only 12 of them have been police officers, and she prosecutes over 3,000 a year. So I just think that I'm not here to be her spokesperson, and I have disagreed well, you're with her. doing a good job. Well, I, was say. <laughs> well, I am. Right. I am. Right. No, but I disagree. Well. I, did, I thought she mishandled the Greitens case badly. I thought she handled the bail project case badly. I'm not saying everything's so wonderful about her, but it's all this narrative is that she's not doing anything. It's just not fair. I, I, I disagree with the extent as I don't, I think some people say not doing anything. I think as far as it comes on, and we can argue, what are the conviction rates? Are they 90? Are they 20? Let's sit down with all the numbers. It's like arguing TV ratings. Right. I don't think that people are saying that she's not doing nothing. I think they're saying exactly what you're saying. What she's done, she's done poorly. The Greitens investigation, yeah, the bail situation. These are not little things that her office has mishandled. So well, who knows what's going to be the election, but this idea that this galvanized support and that somehow there's not a group out there who is equally galvanized against her, I, I think is I think, a little pie in the sky. I think there's a lot that she's bungled, but on the other hand, she's kind of drawn an adversary that helps make her more appealing yes. to a huge segment of the population, and that is Jeff Ruta, who is the business manager of the police union. And people want to give her a lot of grief about this one word tweet exactly. You know, his response is that she needs to be removed from office by force if necessary. I mean, this guy has a history of some terrible tweets and continues to say absolutely terrible and regrettable things. And so it's kind of her luck that she has this foil that very Agreed. few people want to get in bed with this guy. Agreed. Well, I did ask Rorta, and for the record, he says he was referring to her removal by losing her law license. Hmm. That's his position. That's his position. He might have phrased but, that but, but a little the, more uh, gracefully. I think he could have used a, a better choice of words. I think it was an intemperate tweet on her part. I think it was an intemperate use of terms on his. And I think this is the whole point. We're constantly having these 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 battles and I don't think anybody's benefiting at the, in the end. I think that, you know, we'll, we'll, it's going to be a very interesting uh, election. And the fact is, Mary Pat Carl, she did run against um, mm -hmm. uh, Kim before, and you're going to see other candidates get into this race, and I suspect what's going to happen again is they are going to split the opposition to what Gardner's doing. And that becomes that race and, that and, Gardner and, and has Gardner an easier shot. Gardner plays shot. very well to her base, which seems to be the, the black churches and the St. Louis American, and I think she'll be a strong candidate. I, my guess is it'll end up being Carl, 
versus Gardner. You don't think anyone else will get in? On which side? I mean, how do you know? I mean, I, I, I have no more idea of somebody will than you do that somebody won't. I know or, when or Carl ran last time, there were a lot of prosecutors even within the office that weren't happy with her as Jennifer Joyce's chosen heir. And that's why you saw mm. another candidate from inside that office, Patrick Hamaker. I wouldn't be surprised Who, if you would see I another can, candidate like that. And I wouldn't is, be surprised if you saw two people running head to head. And you took Patrick Hamaker is, was a white, is a white candidate who got the endorsement of the African-American uh, Ethical Society of Police. It was a very in that last election, and it was interesting that there were two candidates from Jennifer's office. And I don't, I'm pretty sure she sat it out, right? I don't think she endorsed anybody. Well, I think the, the I, think she, I thought she was with Pat Carr. I thought was she, she was. Too. Oh, maybe I'm wrong with that. I, I think the puffs of smoke have come out from the powers that be in St. Louis, and Joe is right. Uh, the, she's running against Gardner, and nobody else better dare run. I think that's what that whole commentary was about about a week ago, and why she's coming up now. So, well, so she, she can't so, dictate that. Yeah, we'll see if that works. Okay. I, I understand that's the strategy. But that's a, yeah, that's the strategy. I mean. It, you live in the it's, city. It's, it's, the, it's, you can run. it's the math of St. Louis yeah. politics. Right. Right. The problem How is. How did Lyda Crucian get elected? Right. Yeah. Well, ex except okay. it's the old math. I mean, Tashara Jones, one of four strong mm -hmm. black candidates, almost won. I mean, it was shocking to those of us who would think in the old way. But the point being, she still lost because of that split vote. Yeah, in the end result. So how are you going to say that there won't be some black candidate put up against Kim Gardner? No, I think it's possible. I mean, so I think, we're I trying think, to predict I, I, I think something we about, have no idea of. The thing no about idea. St. Louis is way too many people want to run for every single elected office in it. Absolutely. The point I was trying to make is you should be aware that it's not, uh, we, we think of the city elections as all being one. It's a very different dynamic when the mayor's, uh, when it's the mayor in March of, uh, in, in whatever year it'll be next. Um, than it is the general election, which is the state offices because St. Louis City is a county. That's all I was saying is that changes the dynamic a little bit. Yeah, and turnout. And absolutely. it's a general election, a presidential yeah. election. There's just a lot of factors that, that are at play. Okay. Well, let's go to Creve Corps, where a nice lady wants to keep her service monkeys. She's got three of them and Creve Corps by uh, zoning and residential law says, uh, nope, you can't have monkeys. I personally don't think there is anything as a service monkey, but I could be wrong. Am I, Sarah? Well, it turns out there is actually an organization <laughs> devoted exclusively to service monkeys. Ray and I have been doing some research, <laughs> yes, yeah. and we did find this that out. Go, so, go journalism. Yes. Right. Our Google search right. has convinced us that this is a legit thing. It's a fine organization from what Google tells us. And I do want to defend this woman, Texan Tegan is her, um, her very exciting name here. Um, you know, she's got these monkeys that she keeps in her house. And what we learned from this excellent story in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch is that her neighbors are very concerned about this. But in the Post-Dispatch reporting, at least, there are no concrete examples of the monkeys harming anyone. The woman has made it clear, these monkeys are just in my house. They are not running amok in this neighborhood. Well, I say, if a woman's home is her castle, why can't it also be her zoo? Well, sir, <laughs> let me be the grumpy old man who doesn't want the kids on my yard and doesn't want monkeys next door. I mean, you know, I, I have grandkids, and I don't want my next-door neighbor with three monkeys, whether they're support monkeys or not. <laughs> this is a potential danger. You know, have a support pug. Have a, have a little dog. You don't need a monkey. That's what I say. Do you have any evidence that these monkeys have been running outside of this woman's house? Because I, I think that's I, the I don't, I don't, but, but I Sarah, don't spy on this I, woman, I, Sarah. I don't know. If I had a support mountain lion and it stayed in the house all the time, <laughs> you would still think, like, you know, if he ever decided not to be, you know, so supportive, then that might be a problem. I, and monkeys have really. hurt people. Well, you know, that, that is yeah. true. I, I think the question is, I agree completely with Sarah about a woman's home is her, is her castle. Uh, uh, I don't have a problem with the monkeys there. I guess it's the term support monkey. Uh, so does this mean I end up on an airplane next to someone with a monkey because it's their support monkey? And when does it become a support snake? And when does it become a support parrot? And I mean, at what point do you just go, okay, look, let's pick two types of animals that can be support animals, you know? I, I, it just is kind of silly, but in her a, house, yeah, it fine. Is, it is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it's not much of a thing. In other words, I don't think I don't think that monkeys make as because support dogs are a very serious and important part of our our world and are amazing animals. I don't think monkeys do that as well. Are, so, they, are these but, monkeys but, trained? I, I yes, did not go to I this website, they, so I, there I, is some. There is such a support thing. dogs is are not, trained. Correct. I had not heard of them before Sarah and I learned about <laughs> them at the same time. But my understanding is they are not considered 
They're not as, let's say, mainstream as support dogs. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I suspect they wouldn't work well on an airplane. Although they may, they'd make for an interesting flight. And how big of a monkey? They what might kind make of a monkey? I think these are big I don't monkey. know. Is this open to all primates? Hey, listen. Just... This is a show by that St. Louis, Phil the Gorilla was one of the great, Figures in the history of our So time. you're in favor of support right. gorillas? Possibly. Okay. <laughs> but now, and I'll take it under advisement, but actually, I don't, do I, some I, I don't think so. I'll give Creve Corps credit. Well, they had actually thought out whatever this regulation right, is right. because it says non-human primates. Right. And people are reminded yeah. that, oh, that's right, we are My primates. Guess is, right. Now, there are some that I would like to outlaw as neighbors, too, just like the monkeys, but, you know. <laughs> and, and I will say this. I will not criticize Creve Corps for enforcing its ordinances, I mean, if they want to. So True. All right, another um, animal story, but this one's a little more intense. Uh, we had two episodes here, I guess, in the region where uh, men literally stabbed dogs to death. And now we're all wondering, what is the penalty going to be for that? I, for one, think they should do jail time. I think that's just a little bit out of control. I think it proves that you're a danger to your neighborhood and the people who live there. But, Joe, uh, jail time for these two? Jail time, yes. We, I believe it was, we were talking about should he go to prison. I believe this person should be fined, placed on probation, do some jail time, but more importantly, get a psychiatric evaluation since it seems our new prosecutors are big on alternative methods and not just throwing people in jail. Clearly a person is disturbed when you stab a small dog seven times and slam it to the ground. So I am not looking for this person not to be exonerated if the evidence proves him to be guilty and everything would point toward that at this point. I believe penalties should be taken. Do I think sending someone like that to two or three years in prison is the way to do it? I believe this person has some fundamental problems and I would like to see it psychiatric evaluation before we start making a decision on where this person needs to go. He's clearly disturbed, I, in I, my opinion. And I did mean prison. I mean, like, if you got yeah. a year in prison and then he can get his diagnostic while he's doing his time, in wherever the nearest Fulton. prison is. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, you know, abusing animals and um, acts of domestic violence are the few things that are statistically linked to people who end up doing mass shootings or to people who end up becoming serial killers. And so for us to slough this off and to say, oh, we can't charge somebody with manslaughter or murder because it's just a pet, it's not actually a person, it seems like there's maybe a problem if that ends up where these things go. And so they should be charged with person. manslaughter? No, I'm not saying manslaughter, but I'm saying this is a, this is a dangerous person, a person well, who would do I, this. I, I, I believe, dog. and I believe, I just said, that's exactly what I believe. So He's I a dangerous person. And I, what you're saying is let's forget the psychiatric evaluation and not look into what the problems are. Let's just send them straight to prison. When there's people who actually shoot other people who get out of prison after two, three, four years. All I'm saying is, is that before we say go to prison because it's a cute dog, let's look at the problem. Isn't that sort of taking a new view of criminal enforcement and punishment? that both prosecutors have stated they are well in favor of, which is warehousing people into institutions, and let's find root well, causes. Well, 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 let's not get too much into this. Like, this is a mental health issue, not a gun issue or a violence issue. This, this was a violent act, Joe, where he's stabbing that little dog, and then according to the reports, standing there with his gun, you know, staring at the people whose dog he just killed. This sounds like a dangerous thing. and and. I don't want to go overboard with psychiatric evaluations on you this. You don't man. think there's a mental health issue oh, in the, the situation you just described? Joe, Joe I think okay. that there's a mental health issue in most violent acts, but I don't think you say, well, that's violent, but this is a mental health issue right. about yeah. well, let me that's say, all I'm saying. First of all, I, am in, I don't like when we try to sentence people without knowing all the facts, but having said that, whatever the maximum is, the maximum, that they can possibly give this guy, please give it to him. And as far as the reference to reform-minded prosecutors, they are not calling for less jail time for people who stab people, dogs, or anything else. The, the, the folks that are talking about mass incarceration are not, that I've never heard one say, we need to go lighter on people who stab and shoot people. I just think, a community, I think a community has a right to say, like, listen, if you do something that heinous to an I, animal, we have the right to send you it is to heinous. prison. And I, I think that is kind of getting lost in that, wait a minute, we're just not having this. Maximum, enough is enough. So I, You want I, me to be a hard light on crime? You got one. Uh, that, to me, this was so despicable. Right. He deserves I, some, some time, time. Joe, I'm going to come right back to you.
You live in the city. Sarah mm -hmm. lives in the city. We often hear that those of us who don't live in the city don't understand. Well, I live in the city of Kirkwood, and we don't have a residency requirement for police or fire department officials. I understand that because, you know, I mean, I live in a little house that's affordable, but, you know, Kirkwood can be pricey. So I don't think it's fair to make people live there who, you know, work there. Do you agree with that? Now, I have always been in favor of a residency requirement. I have been opposed each and every time the city has weakened that residency requirement over and over again to the point where now uh, arguing for it is almost useless since they will find exceptions for everything. When I first started working at Post-Dispatch, uh, the rule was unless it was basically a crisis, that there is nobody living in the city who has this specific talent. And it would be an architect or some type of surgeon for the city hospitals at the time. Now it's been, we're gonna accept this, then we're gonna accept this. So they've basically erased it. But I will always take the position of being in favor of, if you work for the city of St. Louis, live in the city of St. Louis. City dweller too? I'm actually with Joe on this one. And you know, Beth Howard, who's an older woman in the city of St. Louis right now, she keeps introducing bills to try to get this changed. And she's gonna bring this back now that the aldermen are, are going back into session. And I think it would be an unfortunate thing for the city of St. Louis to lose this. You know, we already have this sort of distrust between the people who live here and the people that are policing them. And the whole idea of the residency requirement is when they're your friends and your neighbors, you're not just jetting in and being the quote, occupying force that some people might accuse you of being. These are your neighbors and you're trying to make this a better city. And so I would hate to see this thrown out. I completely disagree. And I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on, I, last week I was railing yeah. about how we all own the crime problem. I believe in regionalism and getting rid of the city county artificial line the best we can. So I'm going to be consistent on this and say, I, I don't think, I, I don't think there's any newspaper that would have a residency requirement that says you can only cover the city if you live in the city. Um, I think that, that people that what we need, particularly at this time, where it is so difficult for the city police department to even hire people, we need the largest pool of the best passable, best paid police officers available. And anything, that's just one example, and other city government officials, anything that narrows that pool is a bad idea right now for the city. So I am totally in favor of getting rid of any residency uh, requirements at all. Sarah, on your program, St. Louis on the Air, Discussing airport privatization, I guess, a couple weeks ago. Uh, now? Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Uh, you had an interesting caller named Dominique. We have learned that Dominique was not Dominique. Who was he? Well, we don't know anything with 100% certainty. However, an audio analysis has found <laughs> that very likely Dominique was Douglas Petty, who is a paid spokesman for the airport privatization effort. And he actually ended up losing his job because of this. Um, my colleagues at St. Louis Public Radio did some fine reporting on this story, and they put it out there that he's very likely the guy who called in and gave some talking points about this airport privatization plan without acknowledging that he's very likely being paid by those same backers. And Paul Payne, who runs the city airport working group, it appears that he took that very seriously and did force his termination. You're, according to the story, your colleagues did forensics? So I was, they did hire I was an kind of impressed and terrified at the same time <laughs> you could call in and you're gonna have to quit calling i'm not, I'm not criticizing <laughs> i just i didn't know they could do that you know were, i'm not i'm not going by dominique you know, my, uh, but, but, uh, my colleague no. was there on air with me when this call came in and she slid a piece of paper across the table and she said that's douglas petty she recognized that voice right away and i think it, it bothered her a little bit because of the idea that they keep touting transparency you know that you can trust what's going on behind closed doors because it's all these city employees who are working on this for the betterment of the city and so it really kind of bothered her when he he didn't quite deny it he was just like when I call a radio station I use my own name she wanted to get to the bottom of this well one thing about him he's a spokesperson and apparently he believes in his cause because <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you asked the supporters if they would come on sure and they said no and they actually they initially said yes and then they weren't right. available right okay but, yeah. so here's the poor spokesperson believing in his cause <laughs> and realizing well, I want to get my point out there. And so the calls, and you know, Dominique was not the smart way to go about this. But I thought, you know, good for him. I was only, I was just pleased to see somebody giving a shout out to Dominique Wilkins of the old Atlanta Hawks. Right. I was like, well, wow, yes. I have to say, the other thing that bothered me in the story was this reference that this person is paid, everybody knows Rex Sinkfield is bankroll in this thing. And I, and I don't know, a lot of us don't like the idea, but why is this, is this, how is this person working for the SLDC 
and being paid by Rex. And, and, and at that point, part of it, it yeah. feels like the money's being like laundered mm -hmm. through the city. What exactly a, is that about? At one point, the city decided that they kind of needed somebody to be their point person on the communications for this effort. And so they brought in this, um, this person that they thought would do a better job of managing their message. So he's being paid through the St. Louis Development Corporation but he'll be refunded at some point by Rex and Fields. Right, oh, if, if they decide to privatize, right? right. That, right. That, yes, that's that, this whole thing who, really concerns who me. Who fired him? Re real quick here, who fired him? Did well, the city fire him or did... They will not comment on the record about a personnel matter, but oh. it appears to be that it was the, the airport working group chairman who's the city budget director, Paul But Payne. that's the problem with this thing. It's like, is this a private thing or is it a city thing? And if it's a city thing, please explain why it was decided to put it in motion 26 days before the end of a 16-year term by the mayor. So the former mayor. It doesn't make any well, sense. Well, there's a lot of problems with this whole thing. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, we're joking about this, but this whole airport this is privatization is, right. is, is is better together part two. It's, oh, it's, yes. It's right. in a lot of ways worse than better together, and that's hard. That's saying something. Yes, uh, no, absolutely. I Like say, all kidding aside, these are the people that will probably come back and recommend to the city that the airport be sold, and that's not funny. I mean, I, either, way, either side, you may be on it. You've got a guy doing something like this. Uh, I'll come on, say well, Louis. We I can put do those that. kind of working groups in with summits. The summit. <laughs> you, can, you can either predict what's going to happen without a question of a doubt, like a working group, or nothing's going to happen, like you can predict with a summit. So. All right. No letters this week, but you can send one if you'd like to Donnie Brook, care of KETC, 3655 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. Send them by email, letters at KETC.org, or send us a tweet at hashtag Donnybrook STL. Catch our podcast on your favorite podcast network, too. We're there also. We're, we're everywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Joe, for filling in. Your turn coming up, and that's going to be Ray Hartman and I. Thank you guys for watching. Stay cool. I think some cooler weather is on the way. Have a great night. Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. How you doing? It's Alvin Reed, Ray Hartman. Hey, before we get started on your turn, I just want to take a minute and just uh, send my condolences to the family of Chris Duncan uh, out in Arizona. His services are going to be this weekend. Chris and I worked um, sh shows together at 101 ESPN, and I'll tell you, everything you've heard about him being just a genuine, marvelous, fantastic guy are true. Um, we were friends, and I'm going to miss him, but he was really a fantastic guy. Uh, we lost him to brain cancer at 38 years old. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, on my birthday last Friday. But uh, Chris, we miss you already, and God bless you. Well said, and I, I didn't have the pleasure of knowing him, but boy, I tell you, I've met people that he, he touched so many lives in this community and, and around other places as well. Absolutely. Uh, as not only as an athlete, but a, a terrific broadcaster. Oh yeah. And, and, and really uh, an inspirational, and special guy. Absolutely. Well said. A absolutely. Well said. Okay, we're going to start with some tweets tonight. At Craig Riggins, the county prosecutor and the circuit attorney being excluded is not at all surprising. Actually, I can respect the public snub. It leaves no ambiguity as to how Wesley Bell and Kim Gardner are viewed by the people who were there. And from Yale Hollander, first time tweeter? I don't think so. This Creve Corps service monkey story is just bananas. 
you can catch, uh, where's, uh, I'm trying to remember. On the, on the train, on you, the trolley. <laughs> well, you, you can catch Yale on the trolley, but also in Clayton. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. All right. Woolen Dog Hair says, jail and therapy for the dog killer. How about making sure he never owns any animals again? He didn't own any animals. Everyone is all concerned. I'm sorry, from B. Beck Swen. Swen. I butcher that. Everyone is all concerned about the service monkeys in Creve Corps causing harm. But excuse me, what about the monkey's living condition? Is it humane to have three wild animals confi confined in a suburban home? That's a good question. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you for the, all the tweets. And yeah. keep so, them coming to uh, hashtag Donnybrook STL. All right. Now, we talked about this a little bit more. Right. Right. I know that, that we aren't laughing at right. the service or any service animal or anything like that. It's more of a case where does Creve Corps have the right to say you can't have monkeys in your home? Monkeys in a, in a home is one of, those, one of those categories that just is going to make for a... a facetious discussion yes. i will say this I, I i we didn't get into the detail one it would be a little more plausible that these were service monkeys if there was one of them mm -hmm. as opposed to three i've certainly never heard of anybody really need having three service animals i may be wrong mm -hmm. but and then the other thing is that um, the ordinance is pretty clear and so um i'm not really i, I tend to be on the pro animal side of almost any just yeah, I know. Knee jerk, you know, Bambi. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always for Bambi. But I, I, this one is. Um, a little. Yeah. I certainly feel for the people in Creve Corps that um, mm -hmm. that that want their ordinance enforced, and I, I don't. I don't really have any argument all right, um, let's, with them at all. Um, let's go to Steve from Oakville. Hi, Steve. Hey, hey how Steve. you guys doing? Just fine. You know, you can't you can't talk about monkeys without me thinking about uh, Inspector Clouseau. You, is oh, that yeah. your service mean, a minky? Your service minky? A minky? <laughs> um, what I actually started calling about uh, was you, one of you guys mentioned Tashara Jones earlier. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I did. And I wish the heck she was mayor. I mean, you know, the job she's done in, in, in the treasurer's office, uh, upgrading things and everything, uh, I really think she'd be the greatest. Okay. Well, I, I uh, think she's uh, going to be definitely in the mix. And... Um, I had mentioned that she will be, on in all likelihood, uh, seeking re-election, I would think, on the t uh, 2020 ballot. Mm -hmm. All right. Who's up next? Eddie in North St. Louis. Hi, Eddie. Good evening, Good evening Alvin and Ray. You guys always do a great job together. Well, thank but you. I want to call and let you guys know that I think the reason why Kim wasn't invited because now we have two black prosecutors, city and county, and Kim has taken the top off the box She's showing people what's going on inside the police department with the racism tweets, with a lot of racist stuff, with cops that are shooting each other, and they're playing Russian roulette. But that's not Russian roulette. Russian roulette is when you shoot yourself. This cop shot another cop who should be charged for murder. And then you've got the chief and his assistant who wouldn't let those cops turn themselves in so she could get blood samples to see that they were getting high or drinking on the job. Until we get cops that are not going over to girlfriend's house or boyfriend's house, crime is going to be bad in St. Louis City. We've got to clean it up. So okay. we got to start cleaning the cops up. All right. Thank you, Eddie. Thank um, you. you know, whatever, going back to that first tweet that we got, whatever is going on between the city and Kim Gardner, but how does Wesley Bell keep getting thrown into this? Well, because well, it's, the same, it, 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 it's the same. Keep in mind that Wesley Bell's office is being, being unionized, or at least yeah, attempting to yeah. unionize right, by point. the city police That's officers. Right. Good point. And, and good point. the same, mm -hmm. this is a, there are two sides to this dynamic. And whether, I, I understand people are going to be on different sides, but again, at the risk of appearing to be a centrist too often, mm -hmm. we really have to come together on this. And as long as Kim Gardner, is the circuit attorney of the city of St. Louis, an elected official doing her job. She needs, the, the office needs to be respected. And, and same with Wesley Bell. And I, I happen to, you know, have a higher opinion of them than other people. But even if you don't like the job they're doing, then, then elect someone else. Um, anyway, but thank you for the call, Eddie. Thank you. And, uh, let's go to Ron in Jefferson County. Hi, Ron. Hi, how are you? Just fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I, your show's a great show. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, my thing is about all these kids getting shot. Now, 
the drive-bys, who knows what's causing this. this it's crazy. It's totally insane, and I know it's mostly in North St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I was born in the city of St. Louis, but I've been out of there for many, many years. Mm-hmm. But like the baby that died today, how did that baby get their hands on a gun? Yeah, I, I, That's the part I didn't that, hear. No, the one this today. happened. This happened shortly I, before we, I, I we got to the hear studio. About this Thank you, Ron. You know, that's a good that's a good question. And, and who is responsible for when something like that happens? And this is not, you know, you go, this is like, this is not really a gun control question. This is just a fact that there's too many guns out there. And that's a problem, and, and, you know, and, and that need be addressed just like the crime situation does. And, and gun safety. If people have, mm-hmm. people are entitled to guns and um, all of us, that, anyone who has a gun uh, needs to take responsibility for having locks on them and so that this kind of tragedy, I don't know anything about the yeah. specific mm-hmm. one, but um, boy, we just have too much tragedy in this city. Absolutely. Um, Crystal in Swansea, Illinois. Hi, Crystal. Good evening, Ray and Alvin. How are you guys Great. doing? Just fine. Thanks for calling. Thank you for taking my call. I was calling about the issue with the dog being stabbed and the dog had to eventually be euthanized. Mm-hmm. I think it was just a horrible thing. I think it's more than just this man waking up and just having a bad day. You know, I've, I've seen where people may kick a dog, which is wrong, but that's just it's something deeper than that um, because of the way the – how cruel it was, how he was stabbed seven times and – you know, if I were the owners of the animals, I would be frightened of my neighbor. I would take action to get some type of restraining order against him because I would be frightened of him. But at the same time, I don't think there's something mentally right with him either. I think he needs to go to jail, definitely. But something's not mentally, there's something not there clicking if you were to do that to an animal, especially a friendly type of animal like that. We're not talking about a ferocious pit bull, you know. Mm-hmm. We're talking about, you know, a seemingly family dog. So something's more is going on with the, the yeah. man that did and, that. And, I mean, Joe was making that point, but at same in the point the kind of Bill was making that I agree with. I think people who hurt people are there's something screw loose to murder somebody. So, but yeah, if your community wants to say like we're not having this to the point where we're you're going to go and spend some time in jail or in prison, I think that's viable. I mean. Uh-huh. I, I just, the word evil comes to mind. Yeah, this true. One. And I, I, it's not that I value animal life more than human life. It's a, uh, it's a false choice. But this story of that, those poor people, their dog, and they're trying to call him back from the neighbor's lawn. All this dog did is, is you know, was, was stray where, he, you know, into this yeah. neighbor's yard. This is just evil. I yeah. mean, and again, there's a lot of different forms that takes, but I, I just, you know, the laws don't generally, you know, there, there is a, a comparable law for murder for mm-hmm. animals, and I'm not necessarily suggesting that, but I, I hope that whatever the maximum is, uh, assuming this person's found guilty, is uh, assessed. Uh, let's go to William in the city. Hi, William. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi. Uh, you mentioned the airport uh, consulting uh, panel uh, financed by Mr. Singfield, mm-hmm. and I had a burning curiosity, and I'm hoping uh, particularly Alvin or both of you could answer him a question about one person since its inception. I have seen the, the very learned to me uh, RFT, or excuse me, St. Louis American writer and columnist, uh, a guest columnist, Mr. Mike Jones, the ex uh, school board person. Is he the same Mike Jones that is impaneled on that consulting committee? Yes, he is. And I believe so, yes. Are, are, it is him. And there are those, I just can't imagine that uh, he would be uh, uh, very thrilled about selling the airport. And I was wondering, are these folks allowed to give their views in public, or what is his role in that consulting? That's that's my only question, but mm-hmm. I kind of thought it was Mr. Jones. It is. Uh, maybe he will provide some balance for the, the insanity and the mystery that's going on with that group. I think that was part of his appointment and I, I don't know if he was a Lewis Reed appointee I I but maybe that's what it is like you say you need representation from all parts of the city and maybe that's you know his role is to actually listen to what is being said and ultimately this group will say yay or nay my guess is he would probably be a nay vote but that's on down the line so we'll see 
I don't know. I, I mm. personally think if someone has an idea like airport privatization and, and like Rexing Field and wants to promote it and promote, advance the idea, that's one thing. Um, this, the relationship between the private sector, in this case, Mr. Sinkfield, who again is certainly entitled to his views on this, and the public sector and how this thing seems like it's already hotwired um, is really, I think, very troubling. The way the whole, and, and I, I have a lot of respect for Mike Jones, and you know, but this is, I think, Troubling. Troubling. That's the right <laughs> just, word. I was going to say, just, you said it again, because I was just going to say, that's the right word. This is just troubling. Just, right. Yeah. And like, you've mentioned this before. This is a bigger deal than that Better Together was. Because yeah. maybe that's because that wasn't going anywhere. But yeah. yeah, troubling. We'll keep an eye on it. Mike in St. Louis. Hi, Mike. Good evening. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I was really turned off at the beginning of the show tonight. Well, uh, uh, Alvin, unfortunately, I know you didn't mean harm by it. But you're 100 degrees, homicide, dog aside, and then with this big old grin on your face afterwards, I'm sure the family whose dog got murdered is not happy about anything. I'm sure all the child homicides that are happening, maybe a little bit more soberness is needed at this time. So we could say empathy is another good word to use. Well, both my wife and I were shocked. Okay. Uh, well, Mike, let me speak. No, 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 no. no. Okay. He, look, point well taken, man. Okay. I meant no harm from it. I, I smile through the toughest of times. But I, I, I hear you. So you had a point on the dog? That, yeah, that was my point. A dog aside, I don't think it's a good word. All oh, right. I oh, don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know. All right. I mean, okay. I appreciate it, Mike. You have a great night. It's uh, having done the provocateur's job as a guest provocateur for many years in the 90s and done it very poorly, I can assure you that uh, it, it's tough. And I, you know, I, I don't, I'm sure, no offense. We, every week we have tough stories on the show and we try to you know, start out in a positive way and, and look forward. But none of us, I think, takes this anything. We all, all five of us are just appalled at what happened. And I think that's clear. But, yeah, um, thank that's you fine. for the call, Mike. We appreciate it. All right, thank Let's you. go to Chris in the city. Hi. Uh, you know, my experience and observation with regard to uh, politicians that appoint study groups and uh, advisory committees and so forth, it, it, it seems to me that the, the uh, outcome is predetermined and it's structured and, and the, the committees and the study groups are structured such that they look at things so that they're, it's, they're, they're, they're driven towards a predetermined outcome. I'll give you a quick example of where that that were an exception to that, and, and I, it can be documented, and somebody should do a story on it. And that was the arch ground renovation, okay? Mm -hmm. If you remember, it was the Danforth, and, and I have all the respect in the world for Senator Danforth, but they were coming in. We know what we want to do. Here's what we're going to do. And you know who put their foot down and said, no, there's a process. It was the National Park Service. They right. brought in public, and it was the public input that resulted, that, that drove the result. And I can guarantee that, and it's documented. And that's what needs to happen in something as big as the airport. And I wish, I wish that somebody, you know, we've got great investigative reporters, uh, you know, but that don't do enough of that. And I wish they would, would Chris, do that in this subject. I think it's really well said. I, I think you really hit it on the head. And I, I do think this is not a study. This is a... Uh, this is a predetermined outcome, and it will be interesting to see uh, whether the political class um, is uh, able to do what the what the Park Service did in the case of the Arch grounds. Yeah, exactly. Very great point. Right. It wasn't that long ago, but great memory, and that's a great reminder. It is because that was something that was headed in one direction, and right. and and still turned out marvelous. I think it did. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Bill and Bon Terre. Hi, Bill. Hey, I asked Alexis, I said, turn on Donnie Brook, your turn. And she said, only if Ray and Alvin are on. All right. Well, she's, <laughs> she's, she's she, a, you better make sure Alexis isn't hitting, hitting the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, she's a smart lady, usually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this monkey business thing. Mm -hmm. the, uh, there's a difference between emotional support animals and service animals. Now, some of the monkeys can be trained to fetch your keys change the channel on the TV, mm -hmm. find a remote, do all kinds of stuff for you. And like the ring-tailed lemur, 
is the sweetest little animal and ain't never going to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. But a chimpanzee will rip your face off. Yeah, right. And so there's a huge difference. Agree with you. I, I like I say, and maybe they never get out, but but there's documented cases where, where you know, you know, monkeys have hurt people. And if Creep Corps says you just you just can't have a monkey in your home, and like the caller said earlier, or, or the tweet, three monkeys. I mean, that seems like that's you know, like just service animal or not. How how does that get by zoning? I think Sarah Fenske did a really good job of disclosing that our Woodward and Bernstein act on this mm -hmm. was 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 done in under 45 seconds of research. It was, and they so did it. They, <laughs> we, we, Sarah and I did not purport to really have any expertise on the subject of, of, uh, of um, support monkeys. Um, but and, and we probably, you know, we took this fairly lightly, I think. Yeah. Uh, and again, I, I said, I have to say, if, if the monkeys were actually outside, which I think the story may have indicated, I, I might have a really, a really different opinion if I lived in Creep Corps. I'm, I'm starting to be maybe thinking I should just, we should resent, respect their zoning ordinance there. Um, let's go to the Twitterverse and to Matthew Dean 616. I wonder if a monkey disguised as a person will call in tonight. <laughs> Probably identifying themselves uh, as a um, dominee. dominee. Yeah. <laughs> At D. Zabato, St. Louis is no longer Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Do away with residency requirements. And from Sister Sarah, 23, we have to respect the person in office, but we don't have to agree. This is the problem with politics today. A lack of respectful disagreement. Thanks for making this statement, Ray. There you go, Ray. Ray. Okay. Hashtag Dottybrook STL. Thank you still you get that. one in before we get out of here tonight. Right. And we're going to skip out to Tim in St. Charles. Hi, Tim. You with us, Tim? You there, Tim? All right, Tim, Tim going once. I think, I think we may be having a Tim, move on. All right, to Ron and Soulard. Hi, Ron. Yes, uh, thank you for taking my call real quick. First thing, I'd like to congratulate Kim Gordon. Nobody's above the law. Not the police, not politicians, not drug dealers. Hey, they're supposed to be catching them, and she's supposed to be cleaning them. Send them all to jail. Thank uh, you. All right. <laughs> all right. That was quick, concise, to the point. <laughs> Tony from Bridgeton. What's on your mind, Tony? Good evening, gentlemen. I, I attended a meeting. Uh, I was at Drummond Elementary, and it was about the public input about the airport. And FEMA had a table there. Okay. And uh, yeah. FEMA controls that airport. If you remember when Katrina hit, they were going to put 50,000 people out there in those, in those terminals. It's called the retention center. And so that airport is not really an airport. It's a, it's a place to save the people. And they had a list of all the things that could go wrong, like a volcano or an asteroid or a tsunami or an earthquake. And the funniest, well, a terrorist attack. And the funniest one was alien attack. Yes, we're prepared for an alien attack right okay. here in Bridgeton. Uh, so the, I, get the airport out of the, get the city out of the loop. We don't need the city in the airport loop. The county can handle it. But it's well, the, but the it city belongs actually to the owns city, the airport. So. But thank you for but the call, you, Tony. We appreciate it. By yeah. the way, I'm familiar with what he's talking about. I mean, it's not reality, but yeah, they have basically in case of, and this is where you might go, and things like that. That's FEMA, the truth. FEMA does? Yeah. Uh huh. That's true. Do they have anything in case of airport privatization? I, I, that would be that? the biggest disaster yeah. right there. <laughs> Thank you. Who, who's next? Uh, that's Rich in Crestwood. Hi, Rich. Yes. Hi. I just wanted to call about that dog. Mm -hmm. That dog was a border collie. And we had a family dog similar, a border collie. Border collies are uh, shepherds. They sh like the shepherd people. And that dog would shepherd kids in the neighborhood. He got the shepherding a man in the, in the neighborhood, and he really got towards the end. He got vicious. Oh! And we had to have him put down. Okay. All right. Thanks, okay. Rich. Well, Appreciate it. We're gonna move on to Bob uh, in Chesterfield. Have, Hi, Bob. Can I, okay. I want to say something. Hi. Well, let's talk to Bob. Go ahead. Hey, Bob. Oh, I'm. Yeah. Go ahead. What's on your I, mind, Bob? Uh, thank. Uh, just a quick comment regarding this potential airport airport privatization. Uh, you know, if if I understand that Mr. Sinkville is funding eight hundred thousand dollars a month to do this study, uh, that in itself uh, tells me that 
it, it is highly, highly suspect and probably not legitimate. So, and he gets uh, his money back yeah. only if they decide through this study, in air quotes, mm -hmm. to go forward with privatization. Otherwise, he's just out well, the bet. Right. And I've I had a career in the airline industry, and uh, I, I think I have a little insight uh, into this. And I think it, it could be a short-term gain for the city of St. Louis, but it'd be a long-term loss. Okay. What sort of career did you have in the airline industry? Uh, I had a career as an airline pilot. Oh, okay. Good for you. Well, Bob, because you had just said that, and you kind of explained it right there, but what's the, big, what's the biggest problem with it? You just say, like, yeah, they sell the airport, they get a lump sum of money. But in the long run, it would be a loss. Is that your biggest concern with it? Well, I, I think that it's a potential, you know, uh, money generator for the city. Right. And, uh, you know, it may not be, you know, optimized at, at, at this point in time. You know, perhaps the, you could say that new runway was never really needed. It was needed at the time. But, but in hindsight, with the, with the uh, uh, tremendous decrease in uh, flights mm -hmm. out of Lambert, uh, you know, it's probably not needed, but it still has the potential for generating a lot of revenue for the city. Well, and, exactly, uh, Bob. To, uh, I think that's, that's really, you got to wonder if somebody's willing to pay a billion or two billion, whatever it is with a B, mm -hmm. then you got to wonder what, what's, what's being left on the table, as you say, Bob. I think it's a great point. And one other thing, the airlines are, as they say, a stakeholder in this and nothing happens without a majority vote of the airlines operating under at Lambert and at this point that it particularly uh, means Southwest Airlines so that'll be interesting to see how they view this. Hey Bob before we let you go what airline did you fly for? Uh, Ozark TWA and American. Okay so you did Let's them all all right. Well thanks that was probably, thank you for the call. Yeah, you may have flown me someplace sometime. <laughs> Ray too thank you. You're welcome thank you. Larry, oh, I'm sorry, you no, guys. <laughs> Larry in Maplewood, I'm sorry. Hi, Larry. Hi, how are you guys? Just fine. I'd like to make a comment on that dog mm -hmm. stabber. Uh, if they're going to give him any time, if they give him, say, a year in jail, I think they ought to break it down to like a year, a uh, half year in jail and a half year working in dog kennels All right. to take care of Dog. Uh, okay. That's nice. Th that's that's, that's a really, that'd that's be a, an that's idea. A, now the dog crazy. kennel people probably don't want him anywhere near <laughs> yeah, that. Right. But you know, like you know, well, put it this way: you could also work in a dog kennel and not go near a dog, if you know what I mean. So I, I, ha yeah. I happen to own a dog. That's, I wanted to say this: mm -hmm. it, was ha it was part border collie, part Auss mm -hmm. Aussie shepherd, and their border collies are the sweetest dogs. I, I realize there may be exceptions, mm -hmm. and they do have uh, herding instincts, but but. Uh, uh, there, I think you've talked to most people who own or know a border collie, and uh, it's it's a pretty infuriating thing that happened. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you there for the call. It's interesting, Larry. And let's go to George Jordan from Alhambra. Where's you Alhambra? You got that right this time. Yeah. Ray and Alvin, good evening to hey, you. Hey, Jordan, tell us apologize. where Alhambra is. We should know. I'm... It is in northeastern Madison County, Illinois. Okay. okay. And uh, I want to apologize for the bad joke, but three service monkeys were talking see no evil, mm -hmm. speak no evil, hear no evil. <laughs> and I love border collies, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't want a monkey on my back. Now, there we go. There you go. Thank All you, right. Jordan. We needed that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Dave in Defiance. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment about the police residency requirements. Uh -huh. uh, everybody's paying 1%. What do they pay? 1% state? Yeah, in the city. Uh, city sales tax down there? Yeah, city. city or, uh, What's the or, big deal? Oh, I mean, okay. it's just either, I think your principle is to be like, uh, especially on police force, you should have to live in the, in the, in the city. Right. And, you know, there are those that don't believe that. And I'm kind of torn because like in the municipality I live in, in Kirkwood, we don't have the firefighters or you work there. Uh, you got to understand this, this, this residency requirement made a whole lot more sense when the city of St. Louis was 850,000 people. It's a, it's one of the classically outdated, uh, you know, vestiges of the past. Now the city is barely hovering at 300,000 people in, in a metropolitan area of 2.8 million people. And 
I, I've been arguing that the other 2.5 million of us need to care about what's going on in the city. There's you, part of it. But you got to, we all, they, you can't all right. have this wall. We thank, thank you so much. Thanks for calling, and we will see you again next week. Have a good week.